Hey guys and welcome back to you Nico Dev. Today I will show you a new suit that Firebase released in beta that is called the Firebase Emulator Suit. And what basically it allows you to do is it allows you to have a lot of different Firebase services such as Firestore, real-time database and functions, but you can have them locally. So as you can see this website right here is not on some Firebase page but it's on my local host. And this is really exciting and this video is going to be kind of an introduction to what you can do with this setup. But before starting we actually need to initialize the emulators and this is what I'm going to show you right now. Ok so to begin with I created a folder in my home, I called it Firebase Emulator, so I can have everything set up in here. Now I will open a terminal, now you can only do this command if you download Firebase tools from npm. And naturally to download Firebase tools you need to have npm installed. I'm going to leave a link in the description if you don't have any of those prerequisites. Anyway I'm going to do Firebase init and we're gonna instantiate a new, uh, we could say instance of Firebase. Now we can choose to instantiate a bunch of stuff but in today's video as you know we are only going to worry about the emulator so I'm gonna click space and then I'm gonna instantiate an emulator. Now I have to choose for which project I want to add the emulators in. For this example I'm just going to use a random project so I'm gonna go to use an existing project. And there you go I just took a random project. And now finally we are on to uh, setting up the emulators. We can choose what emulators we want to set up. Since this is a tutorial, I mean an introduction to the emulators, I'm gonna just uh, mark all of them and then press enter so I can go forward. Now it's going to initiate each one of them and it's gonna ask for a port so uh, the, uh, the emulator can run on that specific port. Now I can leave the ports by default, it's going to uh, randomly select an empty one I believe so I don't need to enter any numbers, I can just press enter. So this is Firestore, this is database, hosting, pub sub and then it will ask me if I want to enable the emulator UI and this is actually going to make our life much easier so I'm going to do yes. And then it's going to ask me for the port of the emulator UI. And uh, I can also leave it empty but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm gonna enter a number. It could be any number really, so any port, uh, 1234, uh, keep, remember that number. And then I can download finally the emulators. And once this is done we are completely set up. Now I can just do Firebase emulators column start and it's going to start the emulators. Now it's going to give me a few warnings here and there. I will uh, talk all about them later, for now we are just doing a brief introduction just showing you what all of this is about. And as you can see it will say all emulators ready, view status and logs at this page. And if you remember this port right here is exactly the port that we set up for the emulator UI. So this is basically going to bring us to the UI view of all of the emulators. And as you can see this is the same thing for every single emulator we added. Basically all of our emulators will be at a, at a page which is basically localhost, so our computer, and then the port is going to be the port that we set up. So all of these instances will be running locally on this machine. So if I go to localhost column, uh, I forgot it was 1, 2, 3, 4, as you can see I will go to the UI of Firebase, emulator suit. And I set up all five of the different emulators, so as you can see I will be able to see all five of them. Now only the Firestore, the real-time and the functions emulator have a um, UI. In fact as you can see right here they both, only these two have a UI but I guess the functions failed to initialize, I'm gonna show you later why that's the case. And as you can see if I go to the logs and, and I do reset, this is basically the same log that I get on this terminal, so I can just have the logs on this page. And as you can see if I click on Firestore it's going to send me to the Firestore page and real-time the real-time database page. Ok so I'm going to begin with the real-time database just to show you uh, what you can really do with this. Ok so if we go to real-time database as you can see right here we can do any operations that we would do with a normal database. So we can add a child, an example, ok uh, it could be I don't know test and we can input a string which value is test value. Ok. And as you can see it added that to the database. I must say the UI for adding um, different values is a little bit different and it's pretty, really pretty because you can choose uh, what kind of value you want. For example you can choose a number and it will automatically parse you as a number and also validate it. You can pass a boolean and as you can see it will give you the two options. 
you can pass a map which is basically uh, you know uh, key values so in this map i can add a children with a key test and with a value test value and this field will be added into this field which is gonna call be called test field like that and if i do save as you can see we'll create the test field inside of it we have two values you can also do an array which is basically a map but the keys are always numbers which are indexed Okay, and finally, and this is pretty fun too, you can also post a raw JSON data. So right here I can just write the raw JSON data I want. So an example I could do, I don't know, test, and it will actually um, even validate the, the JSON. So, okay, I will test it to this raw JSON value, an example. And as you can see, it will just instantiate a raw JSON value with the test test value. Okay, great, you can also filter data, and you can limit how much data you want to be filtered. And you can also view the data as a table. So a bunch of new stuff that, you know, it's not really, um, you know, it's only available locally for now. Not sure if they're ever going to update the UI even for the normal Firebase real-time database, but this local one is looking pretty neat. You can also, I think, oh yeah, you can also import some JSON if you want, which, I mean, it's basically the same as adding a child right here and adding a JSON and putting the JSON right here. It's pretty much equivalent. And if you actually go to this page, you can see the real-time database. So if I copy this page and I go right here, and I press enter, it's going to tell me that I have to add .json to the URL to see the JSON. So if I add .json right here, as you can see, I will get all of the data. And also, uh, just like the normal real-time database, I can go to a specific branch, such as test field, test field, and then it will show me the data only for test field, which is test, test value. And naturally, I can do this uh, anywhere. I can do this from an SDK, I can do this from a REST client API, and I can just test it anywhere on my machine. So if I just copy this and open a terminal and do CURL and paste this, I'm going to get the data. I can also post the data using this same method. So in this line of code, it will basically post some JSON, uh, which is this one, which is curl data as a key and the hello as a value, and then test as a key and word as a value. And it will post it to our database. Oh, I actually, I think the port is wrong. Yeah, the port has to be 1234. And it will put it in test, test2. So if we actually run this and go back to the database, oh, okay, that was weird. Okay, just telling me error. Oh wait, no, the port is wrong, so that, this is why it's telling me error. No, the port is actually 9000, because 1234 is the port of the UI, but the port of the actual database is 9000. So if I just do this now, as you can see, it will, re um, I mean, it will return me the data that I sent, so you know that it was sent correctly. And if I actually go to the database, oh yeah, right here, I didn't need to reload, it's in test, test2, and cure data and test, as you can see, exactly where I wanted it. And naturally, all of the other methods apply too. If instead of doing a put, I do a post, it will auto-generate a thing for me. So yeah, as you can see in test2, it auto-generated an ID, and it put the data inside that ID. So the same goes for uh, Firestore. Naturally, you can use their REST client API to make the exact same things. And I think UI-wise, on this page, the only change that was there is this clear all data button that will basically clear all of the database. For some reason, this is not there in uh, Cloud Firestore um, normal version. I mean, not on the local version, but on, on the actual um, production version, this button is not there. I read about it in the docs and I thought it was pretty interesting uh, of a choice. Anyway, we saw uh, these two functionalities of the Firebase emulator suit. But if we go back to our terminal, not this one, but the one that is actually running the emulators, we can actually stop the emulators. And I actually found this pretty randomly, but if you do Ctrl C, it will actually attempt to stop the emulators. I say attempts because sometimes, even right now, it will tell me that the emulators failed to shut down clearly. Naturally, this suit is still in beta, so I, I would expect a lot of issues. And they actually give you this page where you can report them if you find any. But anyway, before going through what these warnings actually mean and go more in-depth on uh, um, the three different functions that I didn't showcase yet. I actually wanted to show you that instead of doing emulator start, you could also do emulators exec, which means execute, and then put any script path right here. An example, test and then a script that you have on your computer. 
And basically what this will do is it will start the emulator and then it will uh, run the script. So you may say, Nico, why would I need this? Well, because if you want to automate the setup, for example, you can create a script that does exactly what I said before uh, or what I did before, which was basically post something on the database and get it back. And, uh, you know, it will do that automatically uh, with just this command because it will just run the script, which is at this uh, place. So it's really good for automation and naturally this script could fork and go on a lot of different uh, scripts and instances. Uh, with this you can start the entire unit test and you can test all of the different functionalities of your app and see if they work locally. Another thing that I want to mention is also, uh, you might say, well Nico, are there any restrictions? Oh, this is nice. He knows that I disconnected the emulator, so as you can see it will not work anymore. But yeah, actually you might ask, Nico, what are the restrictions to the database? How much data can I input? Uh, I don't know what plans are on this database. And this is basically just the Spark plan. And it's not only for the database, it's for the entire emulator suit. So basically you will have all of the features you would have if you are a normal free user of Firebase. Okay, and now let's go on to these warnings. So the first warning I get is that I didn't instantiate the functions. Basically, I don't have any functions on the machine, so it will not be able to uh, do anything with those functions or run those functions. Also, the Firebase didn't find any Cloud Firestore rules, uh, which you can actually set. So if you go at firebase.json, you can actually set some rules for your database and these rules will actually apply. Oh, and then also there is no hosting. So I have to do the same thing. Basically, I have to instantiate both functions and hosting. We're gonna do these things one step at a time. First, let's worry about the rules. So if we open firebase.json, in theory, right here we should have, yeah, here we have all of the ports that are needed. And as you can see here, you can disable the UI. Basically, everything you set up via terminal can also be set up by just updating these values. Okay, yeah, and I'm taking this from the docs. You can just copy this and go to your Visual Studio and put it right here. There, now I fixed it. Basically, this whole branch of the database has to be outside the emulators. So these are just optional parameters for the emulators, which are all of the ports. Uh, instead, this one is defining the rules or where the rules are at for our database. So this is how to properly set up the JSON. And then what I can basically do is do a little bit of a trick right here which is just create a new document, which is rules.json and then right here I can put the rules. If you haven't watched my video on uh, Firebase rules, I actually did a two episode video on that, so you can check it out in the description. But yeah, this basically will allow anything to just users that are authenticated and I'm gonna set this to true, so I can always read the database but I can never, I mean I can only write if I'm authenticated. Okay, finally, it's not giving me any error for the database, it's giving me a warning for Firestore because naturally I didn't implement rules on Firestore. Okay, good, that works. And also, and also I wanted to show you that if you do any changes to the rules, such as doing this, it will say rules updated, so they will update in real time. Okay, let's close the thing, the emulators for one last time, and let's actually implement the functions and the hosting service. Let's actually do again Firebase init. And now, uh, before we only added the emulators, now we're gonna add the functions and also hosting. Okay, so it's setting them up. So now I will actually do a tutorial on cloud functions alone in the future. So I'm not gonna show you a lot of what is happening in the background right now. While instead for hosting, we actually have no work to do. We just have to press enter and then yes. And I think it will initialize a default page so we can already test it. So we just need to start the emulator Start. Okay, and now the only guy a warning is giving us is the Firestore one because we don't have any rules for Firestore, but we don't care about that. Okay, and as you can see now we have also a thing for functions. So if we go to functions, what is going to show us? Oh, it's going to basically show us the functions logs. Okay, that's nice. But then also if I go to the port where the website is hosted, I can just copy this and go to this port. As you can see, I will get to the default welcoming website. And this website is basically located in Firebase Emulator public index.html. Oh, okay, yeah, I just opened it. No, but if I open it with the Visual Studio Code, I can just modify this website and the updates should reflect on this page. Let's see if I can do some dirty change and see if we can see it. Instead of welcome, I can say goodbye. <laughs> okay, and let's save it. Does this update in real time, I wonder? Yes, it does. Okay, that's nice. So as you can see, uh, I have the new page. 
And so I can change this to whatever I want and it's going to work out. Alright, and that's it. This is all I wanted to show you for this video. It's basically an introduction to anything you can do in Firebase Emulator Suits. Now, the only thing I didn't talk about is the PubSub emulator. Now, on this channel, I actually never talked about the PubSub service. It's actually a service to publish and subscribe to information messages so that you can get and post data from different applications and receive them in real time. Ah, look at that. Grammarly is even giving me a definition right here. Nice. Anyway, I might do more videos on, you know, specific aspects of all of the suit in the future, but for now, I think this about just covers it. I hope you really enjoyed this video, it was really amazing to make. Leave a like if you did and subscribe if you're new. Uh, the next video is probably going to be a video on cloud functions, not the emulator, but actually the functions themselves, because I never did an actual tutorial on that. And with that, I'm gonna leave you be. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. See ya!